Good morning, Matt Soper here, Hampshire Carnivorous Plants. And what I want to show you today is what to do with temperate sundews over the winter. Uh, we've been asked this a lot over the years because the plants really, really do look sad. And um, a lot of them get thrown away. So I've picked out some really sad looking specimens. You can see here. And you know, to be honest, I wouldn't blame people for throwing them away because they do look shocking. Here we go. Right, so what I would do with these plants, what we're doing with ours, it's middle of November here now. So get the first one, remove its label, that's a dichotoma. Firstly, take all this dead growth off, cut it right back. That can all be thrown away. Everything. On this particular plant, you can see the, the red of the crown, so it's, it's quite happy. Pop the label back in, put that to one side for now. This is a filiformis, filiformis, again, trim off all the dead growth. If you're planting these up, make sure the bulb or growing point is above soil level, you can see here. In here are the beginnings of next year's new growth. But this will rest over the winter months, so that one's ready. Another one here, a dichotoma giant. Trim it all back. Now the reason I'm taking all of this back and not leaving it on the plant, one, it tidies the plants up, but mainly it stops grey mould or botrytis growing on the dead growth, which can then be taken down into the plant and you can lose your sundew if you leave it on there. So it's best to keep them clean and tidy, like that. That's all done, ready to overwinter. Last one here. I wanted to show you this one. This is Drosra bonata. Now when these are trimmed back, the moss off and everything off of here. They really look like there's nothing there at all. And this is the one we're asked about more than any of the other sun juice. Because if we send them out at this time of year, this is what they look like. But they do come back up from under, under the ground. So, pop the label back in there. Now the water tray they're in, we remove all the water. And we just keep this capillary mat, which we we grow most of our temperate plants on. Just damp, so the plants are not standing in water and they're not bone dry either. So we pop them back on their matting. You can see at the base here, it's quite damp. This is really good, it's really important because as I say, the plants are just damp, they're not dry, they're not soaking wet. Again, reducing the chance of botrytis or grey mould. So pop them all back on. And those plants are all ready to overwinter. Now, as far as watering over the winter, we ask this a lot. If you've got the capillary matting, it's easy. You just make sure it's damp, so pop a little bit in the bottom. Don't water from the top, just from the bottom, so the capillary mat is always damp. Come the spring, well, end of February, March time, we start to keep the plants stood in around a centimetre to two centimetres of rainwater, and then the plants start to come back into growth again. This capillary mat is really good for the plants. We do have it available on the website. Um, we found when we started using this, we lost very few temperate plants because the plants are perfectly damp, not wet and not dry. Saracenia, if they're kept too dry, or some of these over winter, they can desiccate and you'll lose the plants. Keep them too wet and they can rot. So probably for growing these and the majority of the temperate plants, that we sell. Winter care is probably the most difficult time with them and keeping them just damp is the key for growing them successfully. Now I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching.